just look at these shelves. They are so symmetrical. <laughs> I mean, when I sleep, I feel like I'm SpongeBob wearing his karate helmet. I think usually when people get new bookshelves, they take their channel on a little bookshelf tour, but I'm not gonna do that. One, because there's like numerous gaps in the shelves. I must buy more books. And also because it would look and sound like this. There's my pinata, all the books I read in English class. I love Lucy, such a good series. This is my banished shelf. And I basically haven't read a thing behind me right now. Well, okay, besides Eon and Iona, the help, the maze runner from like 50 years ago, and I read that bible, but one day we'll get to know each other. In my heart, I really want to arrange all the books behind me and over there by color, but I don't think I could take separating a series from their brothers and sisters. I mean, I, I have a blue and white theme going on up there, but I can't put Thunderhead up there because it's just wrong. But anyways, how are y'all doing? Me? Oh, thank you comment section. I'm doing fine. I read two four-star books. One of them is a really, really short story. I think like only 70 pages. And every morning the way home gets longer and longer by someone put the code right over his first name by F. Bachman. I also read what I think is like my first thriller ever, An Anonymous Girl. This one made me cry and An Anonymous Girl made me never want to get married. So what did I do on this four star high? I read two one star books, Circe and Nine Perfect Strangers. Don't read Nine Perfect Strangers. It's 83% nothing. But do you know what you should read? Scarlet. And what about the rest of the series? Nope, Scarlet is all you need, goodbye. What in the world? Well, I guess I'm doing the review now. I wouldn't torture you with that part of my mind. But real talk. I thought that since the series has been out for six or seven years, that instead of like doing a review for each individual book, I'll just talk about the whole Lunar Chronicles as a whole. I mean, I did do a non-spoiler review of Cinder a while back. Check it out. But you can't really do a review of a second book like Scarlet, without spoiling some of the first book. Maybe you'll be able to get like one or two sentences out, but that's it. After Cinder does a certain event, she escapes from a certain place and she meets a swall wrapped scallion named Thorn. Meanwhile, Scarlet meets a street fighter named Wolf and they team up together to find her missing grandmother and you will fall in love in Wolf. I think that was a pretty good description of Scarlet, actually. But anyways, if you know anything about the Lunar Chronicles, then you know this is a story, a series about four fairy tale retellings. Four books, two short stories, but I'm just gonna talk about the books. In them, we loosely follow the tales of Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel, and Snow White, along with their significant others. As they try to accomplish a variety of things, kill the blue fever that is killing off Irvins, dethrone the evil lunar queen Lavanna, try to stop a certain prince from getting married to secure an awful political alliance to his enemy, and lastly, fighting off your own teenage hormones, because love hurts worse than having your throat ripped out by a wolf guy. If you read the series, you know what I'm talking about. It, it happens actually a lot. Let's talk about what I loved about the Lunar Chronicles. The characters. I cared for every single person we got to share ahead with. And their personalities really shone through the narrative when it was like their POV. Point of view. I just learned that. We had quirky characters to rational characters to stoic characters. So I think it's really easy for anyone to relate to someone in this series. Me and Scarlet are practically the same girl, except she has a boyfriend and I don't. My all time favorite scenes were when the villain Lavanna walked through the door. Every time she came on page, I'm like, there she is. Something awesome is about to happen. And even on top of that, when she and Kai are together on the same page, oh my gosh, the passive aggressiveness is real. <laughs> Marry me, no. These were super thick books. Press and Winter, oh, they, those were big girls. Winter was 800 pages, I believe. I know this because I had to read 200 pages, 206, I think, every day, so I could, like, turn it into the library on time. But even though they're thick, they're super easy to get through. Like, nothing is over-detailed, and you can just follow along at your own pace. My last favorite thing about the series was just its sheer creativity. Marissa Maya's. All the underlying themes of the original fairy tales were still there. You could pick them out easily, but definitely everything was her own. And thank you, Miss Myers, for giving us the short story of Kid Wolf. I really needed that after 
parting from the series. But now, the things I did not like. Cress, Cress, Cress. Cress was my least favorite character and book. <laughs> Especially in the beginning when we're just getting to know her and her creepy stalker obsession with a certain character. I mean, I get it. If you spend your whole life secluded from human, earthen, android, lunar contact, you're gonna be a little boring. A little socially this. But yeah, mostly boring. I don't read books to be bored. I read books so I don't get bored. I am not afraid to DNF a series. Mid-series. Cress the girl definitely got better as the series progressed. And I totally ship her now with who she ended up with. But it sure took a while. Because when we first meet her, she's either crying or she's just sitting and watching stuff on computer. It's boring. I mean, even her short story in Stars Above was her walking down a hallway. An exciting thrill ride of adventure. The second half of Cress was awesome though. Just putting that out there. Go read Crest. Well, read Scarlet, then Cinder. No, read Cinder, then Scarlet, then Crest, then Winter, then go back and read Scarlet. However, my major, major, major complaint about the series, but particularly Winter, is just how it ended. And obviously, since this does revolve around the ending, if you don't want spoilers, then shoot fly. Be gone. I banish you to cat videos. Whatever the hip kids are burning their eyes out nowadays with. So the whole story ended up pretty squeaky clean. And even though I didn't like that, my major complaint is something I don't think it could be fixed because it's a fairy tale retelling. Even though I didn't like how it ended, could Cinderella still die in a Cinderella retelling? Is it still a retelling or is it just just complete twisting of it. The question is how far can you stray from a retelling or the original source? But basically there's a bunch of scenarios where it was too convenient, someone should have died but didn't, and we could have had at least one significant death. I mean people, you're at war, people die. You could have at least killed Aiko. You kill Aiko, I cut you. All in all, I love these books. I give the entire series four stars. And if you like sci-fi, fantasy, romance, just plain fiction, go read it because there's a little bit of everything for everyone, I guess. No, not guess. There is. You'll like it. Buy the stars, go read it. It covers pretty much any interest. Will I reread this super soon? No, I sort of want to give the series some space so that when I do reread it, everything will be fresh and new and pristine. It'll be like me living it all over again. So one day, I'll actually buy them. I'll put them on a shelf there. No, it wouldn't match the colors. There, probably. But until that day, I must bid the tomatoes adieu and fill myself up with some other beautiful love story. Like Rebecca. Rebecca was a smashing good hit. Or I could read Aragon again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ideas are forming. Thank you for visiting my mostly empty bookcase. But until next time, keep turning pages. Oh, no, no. We are not waiting for you to drool over Murtaugh again. Come here. Oh, no, 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 it's not blue. <laughs> okay, chapter one, take me to my first love. Actually, we're just gonna skip to chapter 39. Ho, oh, oh, ho, Rand's gonna die again.